Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Al Miller, and I'm representing the project for this evening, uh, the project which is being presented this evening. I am assigned to the project management section, which is located at the Massachusetts Department of Transportation's Highway Division headquarters in Boston. I was directed by the chief engineer, Ms. Patricia Leavenworth, to conduct tonight's hearing. And I'm sitting in for the actual project man manager, Ms. Kimberly Sloan. Once the hearing is completed this evening, the attendance sheet will become part of the public record for the hearing. So if you'd like your attendance at this hearing to be part of the public record, please sign in on the sign-in sheet located to my left. Handouts containing details regarding this project are next to the sign-in sheet. First, I'd like to introduce the members of the hearing panel. To my far left, Mr. Eric Christensen from our right-of-way bureau. To my immediate left, Mr. Richard Massey, he's project development engineer from my District 2 office. And to my right, Mr. Bruno Campia, he's a project manager from Bayside Engineering who's uh, going to be giving us the presentation this evening. And on my far right, Mr. Walter Montani of the Arlington Typing and Mailing Company, and he'll be making a verbatim transcript of tonight's hearing. The notice of the public hearing appeared recently in two uh, newspapers, the Hampshire Gazette and the Springfield Republican. Purpose of the hearing, on page seven of the handout, you'll see the explanation of the project purpose. This hearing gives us an opportunity to make a formal presentation of the proposed project and at the same time allows us to record your input regarding this project. Federal aid funding. With the Federal Highway Administration funding 80% of this total construction cost and the state funding the remaining 20%, this project must be programmed in the statewide transportation improvement program in the appropriate federal fiscal year in order for Mass DOT to solicit bids for eventual construction. And I see this one is scheduled for the 2015 TIP. The total estimated cost of the project is approximately $3.1 million. But this does not include any right-of-way acquisition costs. The design is expected to be completed in the winter with advertisement in the spring and construction anticipated in the summer of 2015. At this time, I'd like to ask Eric from our right-of-way section to explain the right-of-way procedure. Good evening. My name is Eric Christensen, and I represent the Right-of-Way Bureau of the Massachusetts Department of Transportation Highway Division. The Right-of-Way Bureau is responsible for acquiring all the necessary rights in private and public lands for the design, construction, and implementation of this project. Affected property owners will be contacted by personnel from the Right-of-Way Bureau or consultants representing the Massachusetts Department Transportation Highway Division. The procedures used must comply with state and federal regulations governing the acquisition process. The current design plan indicates that areas will require temporary construction easements. Affected property owners' rights are protected under our Massachusetts General Laws Primary Chapter 79. If a project is receiving federal funds the property's owner's rights are further defined under Title III of the Real Property Acts of 1970, as amended. I'll be happy to answer any general questions regarding right-of-way activities during the open forum for questions. I will be available after this public hearing for any specific questions you may have. Great. Thank you, Eric. Mr. Bruno Campia from Bayside Engineering will describe the project in detail for you. I ask that you please hold your questions until he completes his presentation. I can sit here. Good evening. I'm happy to be here presenting this project this evening. My involvement with the project actually started uh, when it was first initiated almost 10 years ago. Uh, the project pre being presented is a roadway and intersection project that upgrades the infrastructure to current design standards 
as well as making uh, a number of uh, safety improvements for both the motor and public, as well as the pedestrians. Uh, as uh, it was just stated, uh, <clears throat> a brief project description is provided in the handout which you just received. Uh, over the uh, 10 years that the project uh, has been uh, started and stopped, a number of changes have been made. Uh, as an example, one of them, the, extend, the project limits on the westerly side were extended in order for this project to meet the uh, end of a previous project by the state. And the project limits on the easterly side actually were reduced somewhat to minimize the impacts by this project and in, with anticipation that a future, future project would be uh, done by the state. The project limits on Route 9 extend from approximately 365 feet west of Wally Street by the courthouse to approximately 375, 400 feet east of the Route 47 intersection. That's a total distance of approximately just over 2,000 feet. The project uh, length along Route 47 extends from uh, approximately 100 feet south of Route uh, 9 to approximately 250, 300 feet north of the intersection. Um, Route 9 will essentially retain the existing lane configuration uh, and lane use. Uh, that is, the um, Route 9 will consist of four 11-foot lanes with a travel with a shoulder on each side, uh, and in this case, it's a five-foot shoulder. This brings Route 9 up to current standard uh, mass DOT standards, uh, in accordance with the latest directive, and it is called the Healthy Transportation Poly Directive Policy Directive, that ensures all modes of travel are considered equal users of the infrastructure. Route 47 will also retain the existing use and length configuration. And that is, there'll be uh, on each approach a left turn lane and a through right turn lane. Traffic signal operation will also remain as existing with Route 9 operating uh, as a, with a split phase so that first the eastbound direction will go, then the westbound direction, and the side streets will operate in permitted operation, both approaches going at the same time. And uh, similar to existing, a protected uh, pedestrian crossing uh, will be uh, operational by uh, pedestrian push button. The um, it, reconstruction of the roadway includes pavement resurfacing. It will include new as well as uh, curb re being removed and reset. It will include sidewalk reconstruction, construction of new wheelchair ramps at all, not only at the intersection, but as one moves along the sidewalk uh, at driveway locations. Uh, the intersection itself will have uh, new traffic signal equipment. It will have compliant countdown pedestrian signals and the uh, project within the project limits will have all new signs and pavement markings. Just to highlight some of the um, safety features, um, I did an outline of uh, a road safety audit that was performed for the intersection uh, in 2012 uh, by another consultant for Mass DOT. This allows the uh, some of the improvements to be paid for under certain safety improvement funding. The road safety audit identified a number, uh, I believe it was nine specifically, uh, issues that were listed uh, and observed to be potential that had potential of being enhanced. Um, they included uh, limited visibility of the traffic signals, 
Well, we're installing all of the traffic signal equipment using mass dams. So rather than one mass dams, there'll be one uh, for each of the approaches. Um, one of the other things, limited uh, pedestrian accessibility. Uh, as I just said, we'll reconstruct all of the uh, intersection curb corners with accessible ADA compliant wheelchair ramps. Uh, the uh, report talked about worn pavement. Uh, the whole project limit will be uh, resurfaced so that it will be a brand new pavement. Uh, another thing that was noted, for example, that uh, perhaps there was some red light, red light running because uh, perhaps the timing of the clearance intervals were not correct. Those will all be retimed in accordance with the latest mass DOT timing procedures. Um, so these are all enhancements that will uh, improve safety. One of the other things that was uh, actually mentioned, and I'll, I'll uh, mention this one, is um, access management. And one of the things that was pointed out by the study analysis of the int uh, intersection accidents was that, in particular, at the driveways of the uh, bank and donut shop, that there was a number of um, occurrences where vehicles exiting would conflict with vehicles entering, and that was because the driveway is actually not aligned with the uh, lanes of the uh, parking lot. So we're proposing to shift that so that hopefully we'll correct that situation and those conflicts, again, will be eliminated and those uh, conflicts won't occur out on the roadway. So essentially that's uh, what the project will consist of. Um, if there are any specific questions, I'll be glad to answer them. Thank you. Thank you, Brad. Now, the plans presented tonight are not complete. The next step will be to review the comments received this evening, then amend and complete the plans for advertising and eventual construction. Before we open the hearing to you, I will explain the hearing procedure. First, as stated previously, the purpose of this hearing is to solicit your input regarding this project. As the plans are not yet complete, we may not be able to answer all of your questions or respond to all of your comments at this time. Next, we ask that anyone who wishes to have his or her comments entered into the official hearing transcript, please stand up Walk over to that microphone standing there. Identify yourself by name and affiliation, whether you're on a buyer or a you know, local official or concerned citizen. And spell your last name. This is necessary in order for us to obtain a full verbatim transcript as required by law. Also, the last sheet in the handout is a mail-in sheet. If you have any questions or comments which you would like to submit in writing, please use the sheet for that purpose. You may leave this sheet with me tonight, or you may mail it into the department within 10 days of this date, and it will become part of the official record. Finally, it's normal procedure to ask elected officials to offer their comments first. Are there any federal officials who would like to speak at this time? Seeing none, are there any state officials who would like to speak at this time? Seeing none, are there any local officials who would like to speak at this time? Yes, sir. Michael Klamoski, K L I M O S K I. Town of Hadley, DPW Superintendent. <clears throat> I was reviewing the plans. You people did some cameraing on a drain line that crosses Route 9. There's a box culvert, and you videotaped part of the drain line. I haven't heard whether or not that's going to be included in this project. The drain line is between Goff Street and Middle Street. It crosses Route 9 and it goes all the way through to Hopkins Academy and then drains out into a ditch. It's in very <clears throat> dire need of repair as the uh, camera people, I looked at the tape of it and it's all decayed and 
falling apart. I was just wondering if that's part of your plans. Right now, uh, the actual work to do any improvements on it is not included in our scope. What was included in our scope was the investigative portion uh, of that work to retain the subcontractor and have him go out there to do the videotaping. And we've actually uh, been having some issues with the videotape so that we, we can't get enough detailed information. Uh, what we've gotten to this point is that south, uh, the south side appears to be clear or in good shape, but there are issues on the north side. And exactly what those issues are and to the extent of that, we haven't gone in yet, so we're still dealing with our subcontractor, asking him to clarify that to us. Um, but, so that has not been forwarded to MassDOT yet. The, the other uh, project that you people did a few years ago, <coughs> up to West Street, let's say, there was also a drain line that crossed, and it also went through the West Street Common all the way to Acovita Road. That whole pipeline on the south side was also replaced. It was caving in. There was manholes that were in bad shape. If <clears throat> the state is going to be looking at the north side, which I viewed the tape of it, which I see is very, very rough shape, I was just wondering if they're going to include all the way to the beginning of that pipe, which is like four or six hundred feet to the north of that, of the of the roadway itself, or are you just going to do your layout section of it, let's say? Um, at this point, especially since we haven't gotten that tape information to the state and since that hasn't been incorporated yet, I don't know. I, uh, as I said, right now we were just retained and the state did agree to investigate the condition of that. As soon as we get uh, back to the state with that condition, then I'm assuming that they will make a decision, some sort of a decision, whether they will incorporate it or to what extent they will incorporate it, because I believe a, a great deal of the work may end up actually being outside the state layout. Correct. So uh, I think that all has to be evaluated by them, and then once they reach that decision, and um, the other uh, section or, or location that you just mentioned, if you want to forward something to me, I will make sure that when we forward that information, we'll also forward uh, this one that you're bringing up tonight, and then uh, a decision can be made. One more thing, water main. We know what we have to do over there. It's on the plans. We know that you're widening the roadway on this side, on the north side of Route 9 by the town hall. We know we have to replace the water main. Our thoughts were to put it on the edge of the road, but since you're widening it on this side, I believe it would have to be into the sidewalk for now, because that, other than that, it'd be right directly in the travel lane. <clears throat> and as we all know, to dig up Route 9 with a water break is a uh, tremendous project to do. So I was just wondering if that's going to happen, if it's going to be under the sidewalk, or are you going to move it on the north side of the sidewalk? My last discussion, which was uh, recent with Mike Brizzo, was that he indicated that he has had some discussions with you right. about um, some additional fees in order to be able to revise the construction plans right. just as we had to revise our design plans with the state we will need to revise uh, that water design or water layout uh, water pipe layout right. and uh, he had indicated that uh, he wanted actually me to check with you to see if there was any status or update on that and the town is very interested in running the water line all the way to East Street because we have this old cast iron water main. We had probably seven, eight water breaks in this area alone. And once you stop your work 400 feet past, we're still stuck with this old water mm -hmm. main that's still in the road. I know it's not part of this project. That's correct. But I don't know how soon your next project 
to continue the work on Route 9 would be? Is it three years down the road, five years down the road? I don't have an answer for that. Uh, do you know of anything, Rich? At, at, at least five. You, you need to say that off mic, please. Yeah, that would be at least five years. Because as we know, <laughs> the town experienced a tremendous amount of water breaks, and it would be the ideal time to try to incorporate all of this into one project to get it all the way to E Street with a new water main because it's just a nightmare waiting to happen. It's It's been happening. You people see this. You drive this mm -hmm. lots, of, lots of times, Rich, and you see the patches out there all the time. It's just a time bomb waiting to happen. I think Mike told me that he had also given you a proposal to uh, uh, vague finish proposal, that. Yeah. It was that, nothing, you know, definitely in stone what it would cost. Well, um, we can get you as detailed information as you would like right. if you would like to pursue the uh, design of the, the rest of that. Well, we would have to see what the costs are, but it's just a matter of time before it's, before we have another catastrophe out there and these costs are around $10,000 a piece to fix, and they're not an easy fix. We'll be glad to discuss that with you. All right. Thank you. Are there any other local officials? Yes, sir. Good evening. My name is David Nixon, N-I-X-O-N, and I'm the town administrator. And Mr. Klamowski uh, helpfully covered most of what I wanted to ask about, but I have a few residual questions. Um, there was some discussion some time ago with MassDOT concerning a crosswalk, and I see one is uh, indicated there. It was a uh, uh, supposed to be an uh, on-demand crosswalk with uh, with advisory signs. Could you speak to that issue, please? The location of that crosswalk is just replacing the one that is there now. Mm -hmm. uh, and for the dime, uh, as it's currently shown on there, actually, we do not show um, other than signage, regulatory standard signage, uh, there was uh, no push button on the band. Uh, just before the beginning of this, hearing, uh, this uh, hearing, uh, Rich mentioned, and it is very doable to do uh, a rap, what is called a rapid flashing beacon. It will not be uh, a similar to uh, the pedestrian that uh, push button that you have at the intersection, but there will be like a flashing beacon right as part of the signage. Uh, so we can do that. And that can be either hardwired or sol solar operated. So we will plan to install that. Thank you. I think this is one of our concerns, particularly as we see more usage of the common that people park in satellite parking and then take their chances on Route 90. Uh, we, we would like to enhance the safety for pedestrians as much as we possibly can. Uh, yes. My other comment, uh, question, uh, concerns utility poles. Will there be a need for moving the utility poles for this project? The majority of the utility poles actually are, are going to remain. Um, when the project was initially scoped, one of the things that we were requested to do was try to eliminate relocating all or as many as possible of the utility poles. Um, the uh, standard, MassDOT standards call for a clearance from face of vertical curb to face the utility pole of 18 inches. We went out there and measured all those distances and there were a number of them that were uh, deficient by not very much, but perhaps uh, as little as one or two inches by as much as perhaps six inches. So what we did was, in order to uh, avoid eliminating them, the south edge of the roadway was laid out by creating that uh, dimension line of 18 inches from face of pole. And that sort of established the south edge of the roadway. And then the rest of the cross section was laid out, uh, going, f moving, uh, south to north. So the, in answer to your question, I believe that the majority of them will remain along Route 9, but there are a couple in particular at the southwest corner 
where that utility pole is right at the corner. Mm -hmm. And in order to do the uh, curb uh, opening uh, and in, improve the radii, that one will need to be uh, removed. Mm -hmm. Will there be any change in speed limits on this uh, stretch no. of road? No. Uh, these type of projects, we do not have jurisdiction as far as setting the speed limits, mm -hmm. changing it, decreasing it, or increasing it. So. It'll remain whatever it is now, which I believe is 35 miles an hour. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. I think you covered everything I had in mind. Thank you. You're welcome. Good evening. Damien Shanley. My last name is Shanley. S-H-A-N-L-E-Y. I'm the acting police chief here in Hadley. Has some concerns about the eastbound traffic. We're at bottlenecks. Uh, just before East Street. We've had some significant problems here over the years. And I'm a little worried that repaving and widening the lanes just prior to that may create more problems for us in the future. Do you have any plans to maybe market uh, more efficiently, or is there any type of project plan for the future to widen that and make it less of a bottleneck in that area? Um, there is, as a result of the Connecticut River Crossing study that was undertaken a number of years ago, uh, a plan to eventually uh, carry the four lanes all the way to um, to the uh, Lowe's and Home Depot uh, driveways. But that would be in future projects, and um, any of that work is at least five years away. But um, we certainly can look at uh, the striping in the area of East Street and other measures and the signage and see if there's anything we can do in the interim as sort of a maintenance uh, activity, see if there's anything we can do to make that better. Again, this project has actually been shortened up from its original project limit on the east end there to um, pull actually the, the work away from East Street so that, um, you know, pretty much from just a few hundred feet east of the intersection there will remain as it is, but we'll, with this project, but we'll take a look at it in the district here. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you, sir. Um, are there any other local officials who would like to speak at this time? Seeing none, this hearing is now open to the public and we welcome your questions and comments. Yes, sir. Uh, my name is David Waskevitz, W-A-S-K-I-E-W-I-C-Z. I'm actually a resident that lives about 10 houses south of Route 9 on Route 47. A um, couple things. Uh, I just wanted to say that the change of the, uh, the phasing of the signals has made a big difference to us. Uh, I've been there about 20 years, and I've, I've seen how easily I can get on Route 9 now, and I can cross Route 9 in the opposite direction without having to worry about a big line of traffic that I have to fight. Um, I wouldn't want to see that changed at all. The, um, I like that you're actually not creating more lanes. You're just making it easier to make those corners because those corners are pretty sharp, and that really slows people down trying to take those turns, and often you see them trying to go into the other lanes just to make that turn, so I, I applaud that. Um, I'm kind of curious about the uh, the widening of Route 9 because in order to get your five foot shoulders on both sides, you're going to have to take a bit of land. Um, any approximate width that would be? Is it like 10 feet, uh, 11, 12? Uh, you you uh, asking specifically the the amount of widening? Oh, I'm just curious. It? Just on the north side, you're talking about that's where all the land will be shifted towards. Right. Uh, well, taken. the first thing is that there is no land taking. Okay. Uh, we all of the proposed work will be done, or the uh, construction will be done within the existing right of way. Let me clarify that. We actually are going to do some construction and what we call sort of blending in. In other words, when we rebuild the sidewalk, say, as a result of changing whether it be the vertical height or the horizontal location. Um, in order to get it back to meeting existing, we may need to go outside the right of way. Therefore, the, uh, there will be temporary construction easements. So, but there are no takings. Um, and uh, that's the case 
actually probably for the majority of the length of the project on that north side. Um, but there is no uh, land acquisition. And I believe I'm correct in saying that for the most part, wherever the existing sidewalk is on that north side, it will essentially remain there, which is right along the existing layout line. So the grass strip will shorten up essentially. That's correct. That will be the only change that will notice. That's correct. Okay. Could I, Mary? Could I add something to that? Yes. I would just like to add, however, though, uh, in case of that drainage, um, like Bruno was saying, all of, all of the land uh, involvement here beyond this, the existing layout is temporary. But if we do, based on um, the additional inspection of that pipe, decide to undertake some of that drainage work, as Mike was saying, um, it, it's beyond the existing state highway layout. And I believe as far as we know and the town knows, there's actually not uh, any permanent drainage rights that exist right now. And that would be something that would have to be rectified if we're going to uh, go ahead and do that work as part of the project. Yes, sir. Please step right up. Just one more <clears throat> comment on the drainage. As these people know that uh, part of Route 9 drains into that system that's going to be replaced or not replaced on the north or south side. So just like on West Street, it was replaced as part of the project. So. I feel strongly that you guys are going to be here. Now is the time to do all this type of work. Another quick question just popped in my head is a simple one, the mailboxes. I know we ran into problems on the other end with the mailboxes <coughs> being in the sidewalk itself, which creates a problem for us to plow it. Is there any plan showing where the mailboxes are going to be? Are they going to be on the side of the road behind the sidewalk or is there going to be just a group of mailboxes because I know on <coughs> by the bridge over there there's a few locations that the mailboxes are actually in the sidewalk itself next to the curb so just to clarify you, you do not want them to be situated within the paved sidewalk area due to snow plowing and right we do not want them in the actual sidewalk itself right. it makes so we it can accommodate that up right um, just as a general comment, I mean, in answer to your question, I, I can't specifically answer your question as to where they're located. I, I know that typically we try to obviously put them back as uh, close as possible to where they are existing. And I think as a, a general comment also, I think that we always try to avoid putting them within the sidewalk because typically that sidewalk is going to be five to five and a half feet wide and uh, a minimum five foot sidewalk is what's required. So we would try to avoid that. Yeah. But we'll certainly make it a point to make sure that we don't uh, at least try to avoid uh, placing them within the right. paved sidewalk area. From the intersection heading easterly, it's only gonna be on the north side of the sidewalk, correct? There's none gonna be on the town hall side. That's correct. Yes, thank you. Yes, sir, in the back. Good evening. I'm Guilford Mooring. Last name's M O O R I N G. I'm the chair of the select board in Hadley. I like, first I want to thank you guys for coming and presenting us to. And it's always good to see you and and hear from you and talk to you. Um, my couple comments quickly. Um, I'm more than willing to uh, put mailboxes in the sidewalk if you want to take over plowing the sidewalk. <laughs> okay, that's it. We, we don't have any plows that small. <laughs> Come on, Rich, you can jump in on that one. Um, so the other one is, is we have some bus stops in the, in the project area. And I'm just curious if you talk to PVTA about how to accommodate them, if you want to try to accommodate them. Uh, they actually do cause a bit of a problem um, during the busy times when they're trying to unload people. And they do get a lot of use. It's kind of uh, interesting, but a lot of people park in this area and hop on the bus and will go to Northampton or go to Amherst. So I mean. Actually, I do it. We park here and go on the bus. So if, um, if you talk to PBTA about whether you can accommodate the bus, it might be hard in front of the library, but in front of um, North Stars building, it's 
might be okay. And then the other um, comment was, was is the new signal going to have an Opticon system on it as well? Or is it? Okay. So thank you very much again for coming. Thank you, sir. I do think earlier on we did consult some with PBTA. We'll, we'll check back and uh, make sure that we get the, any bus arrangements correct. Uh, as far as the uh, preemption, uh, do you have a specific system? No specific system, okay. We'll end. We'll add the same uh, system we did in the uh, project to the west there. Do we have any other concerns, questions, accolades? If there are no other questions or comments, I'd like to remind you that the last sheet of the handout is a mail-in sheet. If you have any further questions or comments which you would like to submit, please use that sheet for the purpose. You may leave the sheet with me tonight or mail it to the, to the department within 10 days of this date and it will become part of the official record. Before I close this hearing, I'd like to say that we will be here for as long as you are interested in looking at the plans and we'll try to respond to the questions that affect you personally. Thank you very much for attending and for providing us with this facility. I declare this hearing closed.